All right. NXT 2.0, everybody. Oh, man. Did you watch this show, Mike? Of course you didn't. It's on the DVR, though. Sorry. I did. I was busy. And uh, there's a lot of good stuff. Well, I don't know if I'd go that far. So we had MSK beating Jacket Time, which was a very, very good match. Can you believe it? MSK and Jacket Time had a good match. MSK won. They have moved on in the Dusty Cup. We had an update on Zoe Stark. She's still injured, and uh, she's not going to be in the Women's Dusty Cup. So she told Io to get a new partner. Io said, I don't want a new partner. So Zoe was like, oh, my gosh, you only like me for a partner? And then uh, Daddy's Girl walked up, and uh, it led to uh, Tiffany Stratton versus Io Shirai later. We had a bunch of vignettes, and then we had a segment, which actually was a great segment. It was Santos Escobar and Legado del Fantasma cutting a promo on Braun Breaker. And then Braun Breaker came out and just one on three, like the world's biggest baby face, just got right in their face and said, you want to challenge me? Let's do it right now. And uh, Escobar said, we do this on my time. And he backed away. But man... How many times do I have to say this? Braun Breaker is a home run guaranteed on the main roster. And you know who's not but should be? And I still just cannot for the life of me figure this out because it's all they want and it's right in front of their face. Santos Escobar is hes such a superstar. He looks great, speaks perfect English. They want this, this Hispanic character, but he's just flip-flopping around down here in NXT as they push... 46-year-old Rey Mysterio on the main roster, and they're, ah, we're going to fight another Rey. The whole group, the whole package could be on the main roster as a main roster act. It could have been there a long time ago. It just, this goes back to what I say over and over again about this company and brown people and a lot. I just, it's just, it's insulting. It's insulting to have a guy at the level of Fantasmo to have him there and because hopefully I'm calling him that again soon because that'll mean his contract is over and we're done with this stupid name Santos Escobar and he can go back to being elf it just this drives me nuts you all you want you have a clientele that comes back to you constantly over and over again after you give them Alberto Del Rio then pull it away or you give them this person and you pull it away or you go back to Ray Mysterio Jr. over and over again because Mystico was too annoying for you and you don't know how to put over Grandma Talik. Grandma Talik was there for three or four years doing nothing, doing nothing, not being marketed at all, being treated like a bum, being treated like a joke. One of the biggest stars and one of the best wrestlers in the entire world when he joined a Mascara Dorada with a bunch of guys who he was used to working with. And that's what she did to him. And now with, with Legato, why? Why? Because Escobar isn't tall enough? Because, like, Swerve wasn't tall enough? Like, those were two guys that were being put against each other that should have been your future. It should have been bringing in new fans and should have been waking up old fans and saying, I just, it pisses me off because there's levels and layers to this that get extra annoying when you pull back the onion and it sucks. Solo Zakoa and Boa had a no DQ falls count anywhere match. It was all right. They hit each other with a bunch of stuff. I mean, it wasn't bad. Like if you like guys hitting each other with stuff, it was good, but uh, there was like nothing to it really. Duke Hudson beat Guru Raj. And uh, then Dante Chen came out, and they had a pull-apart, and uh, Hudson chop-blocked his leg, his injured leg, so that seems to be a feud. We had an explanation by, uh, yep, he's still Gunther, but he's no longer Gunther Stark. He's just Gunther. And I guess technically he never was Gunther Stark, although they trademarked the name because he was supposed to be Gunther Stark. So the possibility that he could be is that, still there. I got a better idea. Let's just call him Gunther. So he explained... Ugh. Get this. He said, the name by which I am known worldwide, the name that my parents gave me, named after my grandfather. He goes, well, now it's time to let the past die. That's how he explained changing his name. So now he's Gunther. Now, all righty. We had Kaylee Ray, Indy Hartwell, and Persia Parada beating uh, Toxic Attraction. In a six-woman tag, uh, this match went on uh, 
They went too long. They got the heat on Indy Hartwell for about, uh, uh, by my estimation, it was six hours. And then they did a bunch of stuff there at the end. Hey, listen, if you watch Raw 10, uh, the match with the Bushwhackers, way worse than this one. Then we had Grizzled Young Vets meeting Chase University, Andre Chase, and Bodie Hayward. It was the debut of Bodie Hayward. I think this is his second match. And uh, I can't say that he was, like, good or anything like that, but he was super over with this crowd. And, uh, you know, they do that thing in football where they run really fast and then you drop down, and then you jump up and you run really fast and you drop down? He does that for a spot like the people's elbow. He gets over the guy, he runs, and he does a standing splash. Doesn't even jump. He just, like, falls on him, and then he runs and he falls on him. The place is going nuts for this guy. Wait but a they, second. Is he, they how high him. is he getting these knees up? Because your coach will always yell, you got to get those knees up. Are the knees up before he drops down? Are well, they up no, high? nobody's chanting knees up, knees up, so they must be up high enough. All right. And then Von Wagner ran in, and uh, he he beat up uh, Chase University. They lost, he by bottom? the way. Yeah, Chase University did not uh, advance in the tournament. And mm. uh, Robert Stone is now managing Von Wagner. Yep. He hasn't been cut. Like, and this is no offense no. to Robert Stone, but for a company that does not value managers whatsoever, they've treated him like a joke. He's for whatever reason he exists, even though he doesn't have any clients and he has nothing of like to add to his resume or nothing even on his resume with this guy. He's still there. It's like Malcolm Bivens in a way, and I'm happy that Malcolm's there because I love Stokely Hathaway and everything. But it's like. If these guys aren't going to be up on the main roster and you have no faith in managers and you don't care about managers and you think they're superfluous, why are these two guys there? Like, with everybody else that they've cut, like, it just I, I it boggles my mind. And, you know, the only time they're putting a value on managers is in developmental because the Creed brothers don't speak. And, I mean, what? I mean, I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, none of what they do makes sense, especially after talking about the people they've released and some of the people that they use like garbage. We had Io Shirai and Daddy's Girl, Tiffany Stratton. And, uh, again, I don't want to say this match was good, but I think this was Tiffany Stratton's, like, third match ever. And uh, Io Shirai is great. So this match was fine. I mean, like I said, if you like to see people carry other people, I mean, Io Shirai did a great job here. Pinned her with the moonsault, got the win. There were people online last night. And Tiffany looked good. Taking pictures of Tiffany Stratton, who looks fantastic. I mean, she's a fitness model and everything, so she's going to look fantastic. And an IG model and all that stuff. But, like, taking pictures of this and talking about the match as if, and I haven't seen it yet, so as if we're all liars about Tiffany Stratton and Brian is a liar about Tiffany Stratton. Yo, she can go so well as if she wasn't in the ring well, with Io you know, Shirai in a, a carefully people, planned match. A lot of people on the Internet don't know anything about anything. Because uh, I was never that guy that said, you're a keyboard warrior, you've never been in the ring. But uh, when you write something like that, you're a keyboard warrior who's never been in the ring. (laughs) There's a reason that this match was good, and the reason is it's NXT. They get in the ring and they practice the match over and over again for for a week, and she was in there with Io Shirai. (laughs) Well, of course it's better. (laughs) Cameron Grimes beat Tony D'Angelo. Hey, there's another one, Tony D'Angelo. This guy is no Braun Breaker, but for a guy that's had less than 10 matches, and granted, you have a week to practice, and you're in there with Cameron Grimes, he did a good job, and this was a pretty good match. Cameron Grimes is great, and uh, Cameron got the win with the cave-in, and so it's going to be Cameron Grimes versus Carmelo Hayes for the North American title at the Vengeance Day show. And then the uh, the end of the show, Braun Breaker's going to leave. And uh, it was actually clever earlier because Legato was doing this interview, and they said they were about to leave the building. And then one of them said, you know, this Braun Breaker says, I'm the first one here and I'm the last one to leave. So we're going to stay here a little longer tonight. And sure enough, Braun Breaker's the last guy to leave the building. And so he's he's in the parking lot, and Legato, Del Fantasma, all three of them confront him. And uh, what does he do? He starts taking his stuff off. He goes, let's go right now. One on three in the parking lot. I'll take all you three on. And they're about to beat him up. But guess who shows up? Tommaso Ciampa. So now Tommaso Ciampa and Braun Breaker have mutual respect, and they will be facing Legato del Fantasma. So as far as like NXT 2.0 show go, uh, this was better than usual. It's a better show than usual. (laughs) 
don't know um, if it's going to be better than Beach Break, but... Well, I mean, look, with how you describe the ending there, once again, they are getting their their star pupil ready for the main roster because he's going to have a tag team partner who he has an uneasy relationship with. And really, when it gets down to next week, even though they have mutual respect for each other, Brian, can they coexist? Bro, you should have watched the show because there was none of that. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa showed mm. up. They squared off against these two guys. You know what the show, you know, show ended? They looked at each other. They nodded. Bump. Big fist bump. Oh, fist winked, bump, bro. And they're bros now. Man. So, no, this is not the usual stupid storyline of can they... That could be next week, but it's not yeah, right it now. It could be next week, absolutely. Today, I mean, today the they, are, open. they are coexisting. So, I'm not going to I'm not gonna bury something that hasn't occurred. I'll now, bury I, it if it occurs. I don't recall you mentioning something that was very important coming out of last night's show, Brian. Very, very important, apparently, to a lot of people out here, okay? I did not hear you mention the name of Ali J. Did you mention the name of Ali J? Oh, yeah. She did a concert here on the show. I forgot about that. I heard she was dressed, uh, let's say, suggest suggestively. Would that well, be they want right you to know to that it? she is curvaceous. I, I. <laughs> it was actually kind of funny because, yeah, I don't know anything about Ali J. I'm an old man. But um, and I have three times the number of followers on Twitter. But regardless, she Dude, went she out had there. Like fifteen hundred yesterday. Now she's only up to fifty six fifty. I mean, she's fifty six fifty. I thought it was like in the forty fives. Dude, well, well, right now it's fifty six fifty four. That's the thing. Is what was Holy NXT? Smokes. What was NXT good for? Look at last this, everybody. Night? Huh? Look at that flex. But anyway, <laughs> so can I get to my point? Go ahead. So she goes out there. Viewers there. She starts followers. doing her thing, and the place is booing her like crazy. Oh, no. But then she kept going, didn't let it fluster her. She just, you know, did her whole performance. And by the end, they're like, yeah, that was awesome. They cheered her. So uh, she needs to be a worker. Well, did they get Turn uh, that crowd. hypnotized by the, the bounce that was taking place throughout the whole thing? I mean, or? maybe they did. But uh, anyway. I, I'd like to see here that our, our chivalrous uh, New Japan Strong Champion, that is Filthy Tom Lawler, respects this woman purely for her musical uh, knowledge and uh, appreciates that. So there you go. Uh, a gentleman that is Filthy Tom Lawler. Tom is a gentleman and a father. Hey, girl. How was your New Year's? Oh, it was so much fun. Brooks and I put our boots on and we did a little Texas two-step. Oh, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not like that. Daddy, these girls are so ew. Um, who are you? I'm Wendy Chu. And why are you looking at me like a ham sandwich? Wendy who? Ham sandwich? Wendy Chu? Then it ends. Bro, that was like easily a thousand times better than what they did. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.